So I had a brief run in with burnout. It wasn't fun. I wouldn't recommend it. I would say, I said it's brief. It wasn't brief. It was quite a dark place that I reached to quite recently. Um, and that was very much as a result of burnout, right? And because of that, I made some serious life changes. Like I'm talking major life changes. I probably made some of the biggest, most impactful decisions that I will ever make in my adult life over the period of a couple of weeks. And throughout that process, I really learned quite a few things about how best to deal with burnout and I really wanted to jump on camera and share those learnings with you but more so than that for everyone who's kind of followed my journey up until this point I just wanted to sit and have like a real honest chat with you about how things are going and how I reach burnout and also the future of my business because things are going to change so that's really what I want today's video to be it's going to be really chilled like I'm in a different location I say different location I'm literally like maybe a metre from where I normally film, like I live in a very small flat, um, but I'm by my brand new desk, isn't it cute? You can see my balcony area out there, I even got a cup of tea, I'm very, not very fortunate, but it's very rainy today in London, it's like August, but it's literally torrential rain, but because it's torrential rain, it means I can actually film from this angle, because as you can see, this is where like most of the windows in my flat are, so usually I, I can't film from this because the sun's coming in, but there's no sun. <laughs> there's just clouds and rain so you know bright side i can actually film from this angle today i'm even wearing i've got pajama bottoms on <laughs> how badly did these clash with my headscarf by the way jesus anyway the point is is that i wanted this video to be really chill and just a real kind of story time life update situation which hopefully will also provide you some tips and tricks at the end because i'm still me and i've still got to lace in some tips and advice to every type of video content that i create so if that sounds of interest to you then please carry on watching this is a really good cup of tea like look at the color of that can you see i mean are you really british if you can't make a good cup of tea I don't know. I don't think you are. So let's talk. This is going to be like therapy for me. Um, so basically, <laughs> you may or may not know that I have had a full time job throughout this entire process of having this brand. So this YouTube channel, this Instagram channel, like the coaching that I do, I've had a full time job the whole time. And that job I love, like it's at an agency in London. Um, we work in partnership and sponsorship marketing. I have amazing clients. I have an amazing team. My boss is great. Like, it is a really good company. I've always really enjoyed working there. In fact, it's such a good company that my boyfriend also works there. <laughs> so, you know, it's clearly, we're clearly a fan, which is why I've never been super quick to kind of, you know, leave the company and kind of run away from it and like dedicate all my time to this per se. And it's a big reason why I kept all these side hustles that I've had whilst working full time. Now, in case you've not watched it, I'll link to a video up here, but there's a video that I recorded at the start of my journey on YouTube where I talk about how I started my side hustles whilst working full time. So I recommend giving that a watch because it will give you some context. But for the sake of this video, if you don't already know, I technically have three, side, four side hustles. God, I have four side hustles. Two are boutiques. One is a swimwear boutique, which I started before COVID. And then COVID hit, it got very quiet, obviously, because no one could go away. And you know, you don't really swim much in England because it's August and it's raining, so you just don't swim much. So without holidays, my boutique got really quiet. So when that happened, I created a new company, which was called Raya London, and that was a bag boutique. And the whole reason behind that was that I thought, you know what, I can create I can create a boutique website really quick. I already know how to manage all my stock. I already have suppliers, but bags aren't seasonal. And bags don't rely on us being able to travel. So I just thought this is a good side hustle for me, for me to do, at least while my other one was quiet. So that was how I came up with my second side hustle. My third side hustle is my joint Instagram page, which is like our influencing page, which myself and my partner share. Now we've actually had that for a few years now. My partner very much manages most of it for me, especially in recent months where I haven't had much time, but that's counted as a side hustle because we do work with brands and we do, you know, earn a bit of money from it. And then the fourth side hustle, which I don't think I mentioned in the video that I created last year because it wasn't really a side hustle yet, is this channel and this brand. So this YouTube channel I started in November, November the 15th, I remember the day so well because I was having like a full-on panic attack about the fact that I was about to release a YouTube video. But I started in November the 15th and it has grown so much more than I ever could have hoped. I, my aim was to literally have a thousand subscribers within the year and I'm now on 25,000 and it's been, I don't know, like nine months or something, or maybe eight months. Like it's been wild, the growth. 
and the journey that I've experienced with this. And as a result of that growth, it's meant that I've been able to get monetized. It meant that I found some really great brands to work with and therefore I was earning money through sponsorships. It meant that I gained clients from people, you know, entrepreneurs, creators who wanted to leverage Instagram and YouTube to build a business. They came to me and said, look, can you help me? So I developed coaching programs. I wrote an ebook on influencing, which I released in February. I'll put a link to it in my description. Point is, this channel opened up so many avenues to me and I was really consistently quick to kind of jump at any opportunity I could to grow this business and this brand further, which in no way do I regret. I think it was one of the best life decisions that I've ever made to start this channel and to really run with it how I have. However, as you could probably imagine, as I'm talking about all these side hustles and all these businesses, um, it was too much. It was, I, I was doing too much. Now, before I had the YouTube channel, I don't think I was doing too much. We were in lockdown. Um, I had these two boutiques, but they were both so small that I could just run them on the side. Like they were doing well, but they were completely manageable, just me and like my boyfriend helping me sometimes. So they were completely feasible back then. Really the thing what set me over the edge was this channel. I wasn't prepared for it to grow um, at the rate that it did. And I wasn't prepared for all the opportunities what came with it. Now, to add to that, to so the fact that I now had one business which was really thriving. And then I had those two other businesses which were still doing really well in the background. Um, I also was given a new opportunity at my full-time job, which basically allowed me to work really closely with very senior people within my business. Like I was working really closely with our CEO, who's incredible. Um, it was an incredible opportunity and I, it, the role what I was doing required so much more thought power than my previous role did. I think I did my previous role for so many years that, you know, things become quite easy and monotonous. I had the same clients and it was just quite, I kind of got used to it, right? And then suddenly I was doing a different role where, you know, there was a lot of stuff that I didn't know and I had to learn a lot of new things and, you know, use my brain in a different way that I was used to. So it was requiring a lot more mental capacity and energy from me. And then to throw another thing in the mix, around the same time that all of this was happening, so I got the new role, my YouTube was taking off, I felt really ill. Um, and if you follow me on Instagram, you might remember that there was a period of time where I kept on posting the same thing on my stories where I was like, I can't respond to anyone. I'm really sorry I'll respond to you when I can, like I'm not very well. So I got unwell for, I was bed bound for over 10 days, like li literally bed bound. You know, when people say bed bound and they mean like, I was bed bound, but like I could go to the living room and watch TV. No, no, I was bed bound. I could not go anywhere. <laughs> Like I was the most ill I have ever been in my entire life. Um, and you know, I won't bore you with what's happened. I'm better, I'm a lot better now. Um, I've been diagnosed, I'm on medication and I'm, you know, I've started talking to kind of specialists and basically I'm just getting a lot better. But I was bed bound for 10 days and then I was ill on and off for about a month after that. Um, so you throw all of these things in the mix and obviously what you get is burnout like was there ever going to be another like alternative ending to that story other than i was burnt out i will say that the one issue with like making a cup of tea and then filming a video is that your tea gets cold you know because you can't actually spend the time that you need to enjoying the tea <laughs> So I reached burnout and I remember saying to one of my friends, like before I realized I was burnt out, I remember saying, I, I feel like I'm gonna like burn out. And I remember him saying to me, if you feel like that, then you're probably already burnt out. And I remember thinking that makes sense, but you know, I just kind of ignored it. And in hindsight, that was completely true. So if you feel like, if you're watching this and you're like, I feel like I'm almost burnt out, you're probably already burnt out. The fact that you're even having that thought process, right? But the way in which I can basically identify that I had reached a really deep level of burnout, burnout actually, is that I literally could not do anything anymore. And I never realized that that's what burnout felt like. I think I always thought like burnout was just me being really stressed. But instead, it was literally like, there was one morning, so I do all my, not all my work, I do majority of my work in the morning. So I wake up at like 5 a.m. and then five until nine, I work on my business and then nine to half nine, I get ready. And then I start my full-time job at half nine until half five. And then sometimes I do work in the evening, but that's basically my schedule and it has been my schedule for a really long time. And I woke up one morning, 5 a.m. In fact, I woke up, I snoozed until like half six, which is wild for me. And then I came into the living room to do my work and then I just laid horizontal. I didn't pick up my laptop. I didn't pick up my phone. I was just horizontal. I don't even know if I slept again. I was just kind of laying. And then my boyfriend got up and he wakes up at like, I don't know, eight-ish. And he came into the room and he walked in and was like, he just stopped dead in his tracks. And he was like, 
are you okay? <laughs> because he'd never come, like he couldn't remember the last time he came into the living room in the morning and I wasn't working. Like it's been over a year since that's happened and he was so concerned. He was like, are you all right? Like your laptop's not even been opened yet. Like what's going on? And I was like, no, I had nothing left to give. Like there was nothing. I had nothing in me. And it was very stressful because I had committed to all these things and I had all these businesses and I just couldn't run them anymore. And obviously I still had a full-time job to do. And luckily I was in a position where I was able to muster up the energy to do my full-time job and get that done. But there was no way in hell I was doing anything else. Like the businesses were not, they were gonna have to take a step back. Luckily because of the power of batch creating content, it didn't hurt me too much because I had videos in my folders that I could upload and therefore, you know, I was still remaining somewhat consistent across various channels but I wasn't able to do things like go on my stories or really just give my channels as much attention or love as I wanted to give them right and that's why you may or may have no not noticed that I have actually been quite quiet across things like my stories or even like my YouTube comments for a couple months now because I got to that stage and I basically had to do something about the burnout and that brings me on to part two of this video which is all about what I did as a result of reaching burnout so what did I do as a result of reaching burnout right the first thing I did was I took two weeks off work so the first like 10 days I spent in Italy which was incredible fully disconnecting from just everything and then the rest of the time I spent at home where I made zero plans other than to just sit and contemplate life <laughs> that was my plan I was going to sit and I was going to figure out what I was going to do moving forward I knew change needed to happen and I just knew I needed time off to really think about what I wanted to do about it now there's a few things I did during that time off which really really helped me and which I recommend you doing if you feel like you have achieved burnout or if at any point in your life you know in the future you feel like you reached burnout right and the first thing I did was that I fully audited like my life so I sat down literally sat down and wrote down every single thing that I do every business that I do every task that comes into it everything from like that to my social plans everything I audited everything and I wrote down everything that I feel like I'm currently committed to right and after I did that I used that audit to basically sit down and figure out okay which parts of this can I cut out? Which of these things bring me joy? For example, the social aspect, see my family, my friends, that brings me joy. I was not willing to cut that out. But which other things was I doing that didn't bring me joy or that I didn't rely on financially or just I didn't need in my life? Like what were the things that I could have got rid of? And there's a few things that I realized that I didn't need anymore. They didn't give me purpose and they were no longer relevant. And this is where the big life changes kind of come in. And this is where the big update comes in. So the things that I have decided to cut out of my life life um, and the changes that I'm making it's quite a few so get ready the first is that I'm going to close down my boutiques so it feels weird saying that out loud and putting it on a video because now I feel like it's permanent and before I've just kind of discussed it so I'm going to close down Lilo London and Raya London and it's sad I am sad about it but honestly I feel quite relieved the reason why I've decided to close these two companies down is because they were no longer causing me joy so they were doing well but I quite quickly noticed that there were things that I wanted to change about the businesses which would have made me feel a lot better about how they were being run so for example I get a lot of my stock from overseas I don't really want to do that as much anymore I would basically like to create a more sustainable supply chain and I want to actually be more involved in the creative process for my products rather than it being a purely boutique model now all of those things if you're familiar with like creating your own brands require so much time and they also require a fairly decent chunk of money now I am not in a position to dedicate either of those things to those businesses right I do not have the time to revise my supply chain and teach myself how to design bags like I don't I don't have the I don't have the time or the capacity to do either of those things and they were no longer making me feel fulfilled those boutiques and the reason why is because I created this business where I'm literally teaching people how to leverage Instagram and YouTube to grow their businesses like that to me is so fulfilling and I wasn't getting the same level of fulfillment from Raya London or Lila London I just felt like I was encouraging people to buy my bags and buy my swimwear. So when I just kind of sat down and done that for life audit, I noticed that immediately and I realized, okay, it's probably time for me to shut these businesses down. So that is one of the biggest things that I decided to cut out of my life. Now, the next thing that I decided I was going to cut out of my life um, was my full-time job. <laughs> um, I quit, I quit my job, which is a major thing. May not seem major to you, but it really felt major to me. 
I quit my job and the reason why this was it was a very difficult decision to make I knew during my time off I knew that I was gonna have to come up with some some kind of decision about the job because out of everything that I was doing when I audited my life and I looked at every single thing I was committed to and how much time everything takes obviously my full-time job requires the most amount of my time right so I knew I was gonna have to do something about it I originally thought maybe I'll go part-time which might be a viable option for some people however I know the kind of person I am part-time wouldn't really mean anything to me because I would spend the rest of my days thinking about projects that I was working on or if a meeting was happening where I wasn't able to attend I'd probably still just dial in and go to the meeting anyway you know I would end up saying that I was doing two days a week and I would end up doing at least three or four it's just how I am it's just how I work so I just knew full time wasn't going to work for me I needed to if I was going to do anything about the job I needed to do something more drastic and just leave it completely now I should say I'm going to do a whole video on the process of me quitting my job and kind of everything what went with it but you know I will quickly say that it wasn't like I just said I'm going to leave my job and I'll be fine I obviously did the math around it I made sure I had the emergency fund I made sure that I would make enough money for me to obviously live afterwards like all of that I did it don't worry it's not a ridiculous financial decision for me but nonetheless it was still a really huge decision, not just because that was a consistent source of income for me, but also because I'm leaving my full-time work life. Like I'm not gonna work for someone anymore. I'm gonna work for myself. And I'm filming this video one week out from my last day. So I'm about to go into my last week of work. By the time you're watching this, I've probably already left. But you know, it's, it was a really big decision for me to make. I'm no longer gonna be part of that agency. I'm no longer gonna have a team. I'm not gonna have Christmas parties anymore. Like, <laughs> I don't have an office. Hence why I've got this really fancy desk set up because I was like, oh my God, I don't have an office anymore. It's a really big moment for me. But anyway, as I said, I'm gonna do a video on that and just talk about that in a bit more detail at a later date. So in a nutshell, those are decisions that I have recently made, which are gonna make a huge change to my life, but will hopefully stop me from reaching burnout moving forward. And another really great kind of side effect to these decisions is that I'm now gonna have so much more time to dedicate to this channel and this platform, which I'm really excited about. There are a few different things what I do amongst this. There's obviously this YouTube content that I can now produce, hopefully even better content for you on an even more regular basis I could be so much more present on my Instagram channel which I've wanted to be for so long I can work with more amazing brands I can get more clients like I've had to turn down clients before because I didn't have capacity but now I can have more clients I can create my course finally I've wanted to create a course literally this entire year but I've never had the time to do it and I could create so much more really useful digital products for you guys and generally I could just help you guys more so I'm really looking forward to that and yeah I just want to quickly say before I go into my wrapping up tips and tricks thank you so much for supporting this channel and for growing with me over these past eight or nine months or whatever if it wasn't for you guys this wouldn't be possible so I'm incredibly incredibly grateful for you more than you will ever really know so to sum up my top tips for you if you feel like you are nearing burnout or you are fully there and you are burnt out is to first of all take some time off and disconnect from everything book time off work if you can anything that you don't need to do what you know you need to rely on it's like survival stuff cut out for at least a week ideally two weeks study shows that for you to fully disconnect from something you need at least two weeks off during that time audit your life write down everything you commit yourself to and ask yourself does this bring me joy does this make me feel fulfilled do I need this for my future self for example like your studies stuff like that do I need this for money like this does, does this keep me afloat all those questions ask yourself that and really sit down and go through everything in really kind of granular detail by the end of that process you should have a really clear idea Idea about what you should be cutting out and what you shouldn't be cutting out because let me tell you if you are burnt out you need to cut something out please do not take that two weeks off and then go back to life and be like it's fine now I've had time off I feel refreshed because all what's gonna happen is that you're gonna get burnt out again you've got to take this kind of stuff seriously and you've got to just back yourself enough to make some really serious life decisions every now and then that time in your life comes where you're like I've got to make some changes if you've reached burnout then now is the time now's the time when you've got to make some changes they do not need to be as drastic as mine closing down businesses <laughs> leaving my full-time job they do not need to be that drastic but they do need to happen change needs to happen okay so that is the end of this video if you watch this whole thing can you let me know in the comments because i really appreciate you also if you like this type of content of me just kind of story time sitting being real with you talking about the struggles of 
life, businesses, etc. Please let me know because I really enjoyed filming this, so I'd love to create more content like this for you. Also, let me know what you think of the background. I don't know about it yet. I guess we'll see. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then I recommend checking out this one. It's basically like my Q&A get to know me video where you can find out a bit more about me and my life. I actually mentioned burnout in that video, so that should have been my first clue that I was burnt out. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.